Welcome. In this session, we'll go through some of the basic definitions that we require for graphs. You may have seen these already in other courses. What we'll use in this uh, session is an example graph, and it'll have six vertices, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then it will have these edges, one connected to two, two connected to three, two connected to four, four connected to five, four connected to six. We can draw this in this way. Because we'll be using this quite often, let's draw this graph now um, for ourselves. So this will be node one and node two, or vertex two, and vertex three, vertex four, vertex five, and vertex six. And then the edges from the list are one is connected to two, two is connected to three, two is connected to four, four is connected to five, and four is connected to six. Now, there will be two kinds of definitions that we'll go through here. They're the ones that we'll use, and they're the ones that we won't use. The ones that we'll use begin with, what does it mean for a vertex and edge to be incident? What it means is that if we have vertex i and we have any edge, then vertex i is in the, uh, is in the edge. So rather than saying vertex is in the edge, graph theory says the vertex and edge are incident. So when two, that's a vertex and edge being incident. When two edges are incident, what we mean is that they have a common vertex. That is, there's some vertex vj that appears in each of these edges. When we say that uh, vertices are adjacent, we mean that there is an edge that connects them. And let's recall that we're not permitting edges to be repeated, so this will be a unique edge. This, to repeat, um, edges are incident when they share a vertex, and vertices are adjacent when they're connected by an edge. So the degree of a vertex is the number of edges that are incident to it. Let's take this example. Here, the uh, degree of vertex 1 is 1 because there's only one edge that connects it. When we go to vertex 2, there are 1, 2, 3 edges. So vertex 2 is of degree 3, and so on for the rest of this example graph. The next set of definitions we'll use are a subgraph. And this, this has a very complicated statement, but it's really a fairly easy concept. What it says is that this structure is a subgraph of this, we'll define that as meaning that every vertex in the subgraph is a vertex of the graph, every edge of the subgraph is an edge of the graph, and when we combine this set of vertices and this set of edges, they are a graph, according to our previous definition of a graph. Here, we can see that each one of these nodes is a subgraph. That's trivial. There are no edges, but there are vertices. Remember that we require the vertex set to be non-empty, and we're allowing the edge set to be empty if it's needed. That's a rather trivial graph, though, isn't it? Now, let's suppose that we take vertices 1 and 3 combined. Well, again, they don't have any edges, so the edge list is empty, but it's a subgraph. 1, 2, and 3 are a subgraph and so on. So as we collect these, we can get subgraphs. And because these are, um, these are permitting equality, that means that a graph is a subgraph of itself. A bipartite graph is a particularly useful structure in computer science. So we'll say that a graph is bipartite, which means that we can partition its vertices into two non-empty sets, and we'll refer to these as left and right for now. And we'll write, we can write each edge as having vi and vj, 
with a specific requirement, and that is that we have to have one of the vertices has to be in the left set, and one the other vertex has to be in the right set. This graph, for example, is bipartite. What we could do is we could imagine picking it up and sort of dangling it, and what it does is it forms a tree. So, for example, we could pick node 2 as the node of a tree. Node 2 connects to 1, 3, and 4. And then from 4, we connect to 5 and 6. And so what we can do is we can say, well, 2 and 5 and 6 are in, the let's say, the left set, and 1, 3, 4 are in the right set. So that's one example that we will commonly see. Another example comes, for example, from social media. Let's refer to an account, and let's think of the account as having um, one or more groups that it's in. Well, we could draw a graph. We could say that lots and lots of accounts are in the same group, but each one of those accounts might be in a in separate groups also. So we would then we could then create a a social network graph and we would have one set which is the set of accounts and then we would have the other set which is the set of groups and groups can't be members of each other and accounts can't be members of each other so that means that we would only have crossing lines in our graph and we would be able to describe this simple social network as a bipartite graph so as I said uh, this particular example is happens also to be representable as a tree. Now, the next set of definitions that we'll use are the idea of a path. So the idea of a path that starts at vertex i and ends at vertex j is it's a sequence, and we're going to require that it be a finite sequence, of incident edges, and the first edge is incident to the starting vertex, and the last edge is incident to the ending vertex, and then the edges are incident to each other. So in this graph, there's a path from every vertex to every other vertex. For example, if I want to go from vertex 1 to vertex 5, then the edge list is 1, 2, 2, 4, 4, 5, and so on. And if I want to go just from 5 to 6, it would be 4, 5, it, remember, it doesn't matter what order we put those vertices in. So 4, 5, 4, 6, and that would get me there. In this case, there are no loops. A component subgraph is an important concept, and that is that we will we'll sometimes want to say that a graph has multiple components. So for example, in this graph, if we were to erase this edge between 2 and 4, then we would have 1, 2, 3 being a subgraph, 4, 5, 6 being a subgraph, and there would be no path that goes from 1 to 5 if we eliminate this edge. And this definition is a formalization of that simple concept. And that is that it, it's a component graph means that if two vertices are in the component, then there's at least one, at least one path from uh, the first vertex to the second. And the other is that if you pick a vertex that isn't in that component, then there's no path. So here, one, two, three, we can form a path from any two non-identical vertices. Four, five, six, we could form a path. And if we've erased this edge, then there's no path from anything in this component to anything in that component. The definitions that we're going to avoid here are multiple edges. So we're going to require that our graphs not have these. And these would be defined as distinct edges, that is, distinct integers p and q, that index edges that turn out to be the same. We're going to um, not refer very often to a loop and a loop in graph theory is an edge from a vertex to itself. 
So for example, if we were to take 3 and we were to draw an edge beginning at 3 and ending at 3, that would be a loop. And we won't allow a loop in a graph. Some authors will use the term pseudograph. And a pseudograph is a set of vertices and edges and there's at least one multiple edge and, and or at least one loop. So we will refer to graphs as being free of multiple edges and free of loops. And in the rare case where we need to talk about it, we'll refer to such a structure as a pseudograph. So those are the basic definitions that we're going to need for the rest of this lecture.